You know, I went up on the hood, crushed the hood, got thrown. Luckily, I landed with my face. Slammed it to the back of his trunk, and my face went through his rear window. It intentionally caused a three-way crash. Hit me from behind so hard that I, I flew 15 feet forward and, and six feet in the air. So I slammed on my brakes, and I slid into the back of his car. So I T-boned her. I flew over the hood. I, hit, I got hit last time. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is that's, that's, that's a warm-up scar. <laughs> the scariest was when I was T-boned by a truck. Knocked two teeth out and killed my smile. Does it look like me? Does it look like me, guys? Yeah, yeah just for a sec. Now the comparison shot. Uh, Doctors did a good shit with my lip and my eyebrow, man. Just the teeth aren't there, though. Spitting! <laughs> yelling! <laughs> flipping off! They spit at What's you? About? No, I spit at them. Get the fuck out the street! I'm like... Fuck you, right? <laughs> it is the law for us to ride in the street. You know what I mean? We can get tickets for riding on the sidewalks. Plus, it's dangerous. Us not having brakes, people can cut in front of us, and little no, kids, no, no, no. old ladies, pay attention. And then people that just don't pay attention in general. You know, we're supposed to ride in the streets. Respect us. Every lane's a bike lane. That's, that's all we're saying, man. Leave us the fuck alone. Growing up in Mid City, you know, it was different over there. It wasn't really like a bike orientated area. As I got older, I ended up getting the fixed gear. And then um, when I when I got it, that's when I really learned about like I used to see people riding, you know, like riding whatever, whatever. But when I got my own fixie, it was like if you see me in the streets, I'll be riding on my fixie. If you see me in your hood, then I'm riding on my fixie. If it's beef, what's good? I'll be riding on my fixie. Tell them niggas come get me. I'll be riding on my fixie. I start really seeing it and start going to rides and like start seeing like this is really a, a, a subculture of two wheels. I love this, 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 this bike stuff. It's getting bigger and bigger. Really, it was big before from what I was told because it's obviously OGs it is. When I told it was big before, it kind of died out and it's starting to come back. Midnight Riders started back in 2004. My friend Kim Jensen, AKA Skull, sent out an invite to a bunch of friends and I was one of them. She wanted to do a Friday night tour of the fountains in downtown Los Angeles. Brought out my skateboard and we did 18 miles that night. Here was this late night adventure that just reopened our minds to LA actually. And over a period of, of a couple of years, we promoted and organized and grew that thing into a 2,000 person once a month ride. Even up till today, I mean, there's four or five rides a night everywhere in Los Angeles every day of the week. It's a thing. It's a thing in Los Angeles. We do group rides. Good job. Good job. Good shit. Good job, man. Nice. Really good, man. Good? Woo! So funny. I love doing this shit. I've been riding bikes for well over 10 years, and the only time I've ever been hit, doored, run over, tapped, 
has all been in Los Angeles in the last like five years. They all act like assholes. It just depends on the driver. Even the MTA bus drivers be acting like assholes too. I've had drivers, you know, scream to me while I'm trying to get to school. You know, here in LA in the last three years, I've been hit by a car seven times. Four out of those seven times, hit and run. About 1 a.m. in the morning, see this car coming at a fast rate of speed. It had to have been going 50, 55. I made a move to go right, and he made a move to go right. And this time I got smacked. The time I got hit from behind and destroyed like a $2,000 bike, and basically told his insurance that I sideswiped him and that I fell over and he doesn't know what, why my bike was ran over or broken. And his insurance sided with him. It's a shitty feeling when you're like, I've been run over and you don't believe me. You know, and like, why, why would I lie about this? Like, here's the proof, here's, you know, here's the documentation. And do you believe a driver that actually fled the scene of an accident? Make sure that you zero in on that plate. That's your first clue. They may not stop. 50% of these collisions turn into crimes when the, when the driver takes off. That's, you know, that's huge. I had a gut feeling that this guy wasn't gonna stop, and I was right. See the plate, repeat the plate over and over and over. I kept repeating it until I was able to pull out my cracked phone and I Twittered it. Do whatever you can, write it in blood on the street if you have to. You know, you see those cop shows and they're like, all points bulletin, you know, all, all units respond. You know, I figured there's gonna be, you know, there was doors being smashed down, kids crying, wives screaming, they were gonna get this guy. And I call up, and the guy on the other end, the detective, sounded literally like I was bothering him. He was bored. A couple hours after I got off the phone with the cops, I'm sitting there like, what am I going to do now? I get an email from a person named DJ Wheels. He's a lawyer. He's got his friend in the CHP, ran the place. Ten minutes later, there was a match two miles up from where I got hit. It was a 2009 Jack, which at the time was a brand new Jack. Brought in everything to the cops Friday morning, 7 a.m., three days later. And the cops were just like, wow, you did the whole investigation for us. I mean, these cops are in the middle of Skid Row. There's stacks of paper, you know, three feet high on their desks. Their windows, 95 computers, probably can't even get to Google or whatever. It was just like, man, this is the traffic division? No wonder they don't have time to investigate you know, us. first started cycling, stuff like this didn't happen to me and my friends. It wasn't like that. And now people really, really be mad. Like, they really, really be mad in their cars. Ever since then, whenever a car is zooming up behind me, I get really freaked out. It's really crazy to me that you're in a motor vehicle and I'm pedaling with my legs and you're mad about going around me. Which is only gonna take two seconds out of your day. Just today, coming here to this interview, I had a car driver come up behind me real aggressive and uh, it's giving me flashbacks of just being left for dead in the middle of the street, you know? If you can go around me, why are you so mad? Like, what, what, what is really bothering you about going around this? LA has always been bred as a car city. It's just car culture, like it was the spot. Like it's what you do, you drive to the beach with your surfboard, then you come home back to the valley. For the people who say we don't need bike lanes, I look at it like, well then where are the bikers, are, where are we supposed to ride? You know, there's a lot of people fighting uh, transit-oriented development. Um, there's a lot of people fighting density in, 
in our city. Bike lane is, is for us. The bike, they make the bike lanes out of the way. Let's build up some density so that we have shops that service the local community so you don't have to take a drive. Why wouldn't you want more bike lanes so the bikers can be out of your way? Drivers go out and spend some time on the road on a bicycle and then they'll understand how it feels to ride, ride a bicycle in traffic no matter what city you're in. That's the fight right now. We want our space on the street. If you're not going to give us a, a seven-foot bike lane, then I'm taking your 11-foot car lane.